basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports File. I'm your host with the most, Jersey Joe. And thankfully, the school hasn't even opened yet. Classes begin at 11, but I was able to come in a little bit early and just get right into the sports news. Yesterday and Saturday, just outstanding weekends. I mean, Saturday, if you were a soccer fan, when you woke up, you had Tottenham Hotspur against Arsenal, and then it just continued into the day. You had Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. You had Liverpool and Everton, and then you rounded off with AC Milan and Juventus, who's jersey i am wearing today hoping it saves me in my italian quiz but it was just an outstanding weekend in sports so many good games but above all else i really think the game that made the biggest impact on me this weekend was the african cup of nations final between the ivory coast and ghana i mean you talk about a game with intensity and just excitement at every moment this game did not disappoint now we did go to penalty kicks. I mean, the full 90 minutes, we had no result. Then we had a thir 30 minutes of extra play time, two 15-minute halves, nothing in that too. And it came down nine to eight penalty kicks with the goalkeeper for uh, for Ivory Coast, Barra Cope, Copa Berry, winning it for them. Now, it's just unbelievable how that sequence happened. Nine to eight, Ivory Coast. And I'll be honest, I'm a big Wil Wilfred Bonney fan. I'm a big Manchester City guy. I think Wilfred Bonney's a very good player. And when he came up first for Ivory Coast uh, in response to Ghana when they when they nailed their first penalty kick, I thought, okay, this is a pretty gu much guaranteed one. He misses, and then at that point, you're saying. Ivory Coast is in big trouble. Ghana makes their second penalty kick. They go up 2 nothing. Then Ivory Coast comes up again and misses their second penalty kick in a row. So Wilfred Bonney and then the next one, they both miss. Ghana's up 2 nothing. Now, I'll be honest, at that point, I said it's over. You can't come back from missing your first two. You would just have to have the amazing, most amazing luck I've ever seen. But in an in incredible fashion... Copa Berry steps up and stops Ghana's next two. And then at, from that point on, it's just nobody was missing from either side. It came down to the goalkeepers on both sides. Uh, Copa Bear was able to stop Ghana's goalkeeper's uh, shot when he took his penalty kick. Then he stepped up and made his goal. I mean, it's something you really don't see a lot, especially from me as a newer soccer fan, something I never expect to see. But it was just an incredible game, and it just shows you everything why the game is so good. I mean, just you could just see the players just their hands shaking. Gervinho, one of my favorite players in the world for AS Roma, very good striker. He was not in the penalty kicks, but I mean, he couldn't even look. He was sitting and he was not even looking. I mean, you just see how much intensity in the fans. My goodness. Oh my God. You could just see them shaking they, their eyes. Some guys couldn't even look, but it was incredible. And I love the, the tandem for Ivory Coast. I mean, you have Yaya Torre, Wilfred Bonney, and Gervinho. Talk about having a lot of firepower. I mean, their respective clubs clubs in the English Premier League and AS Roma couldn't be happier to get their stars back and I'll get to that in a minute but I mean it was great I picked Ivory Coast to win it and they really had a lot of great opportunities in the full 90 minutes to get the win I mean Gervinho was so close so many times to getting the goal Yaya Torre had a couple good balls Wilfred Bonney had some chances but I mean they just kept on getting a little bit off here and there and they couldn't connect on any goals but I mean, I would definitely go on BN Sports and check out the replay of this if it's up there because it was just something that I was just on the edge of my seat for the entire time. And I love penalty kicks. I mean, some people are not the biggest fan of them. They don't like the way games end on that. But for me, when there's a game of this magnitude and you have it all coming down to something that, let's be honest, at the end of the day is a lot of luck. There is a lot of skill, which we even saw a lot yesterday. I mean, Copa Berry... His skill took over in that game. I mean, he just blocked. After, once they were down 2 nothing, the chances of them win or winning would have to be extremely minimal. But coming back, stopping Ghana for two in a row, 
just incredible. I mean, it was nice to see for Yaya Torre because I think it means a lot to him. He really wanted to get the win for his team there. And now he goes back to a Manchester City team that desperately needs him. Gervinho goes back to an AS Roma team. Thankfully, got the three points this weekend because they desperately need it. It doesn't seem like anybody's really going to catch Juve right now. But if Gervinho comes back and uh, it seems like when he's in that Roma lineup, they're a different team. I think that could really make it a little bit closer. And then, let's be honest, in the English Premier League, there's really no one who's shown that they could legitimately threaten Chelsea. I think Manchester City's really the only club that can. They've been really struggling without Yaya Torre. Now you, they still haven't even had Wilfred Bonney since they got him in the transfer uh, in the transfer window. So now you get Wilfred Bonney, you get Yaya Torre, and Yaya Torre, I mean, we all understand how physical the English Premier League is. I mean, I think a guy like Sergio Aguero really relies so heavily when Yaya Torre is in the lineup. I think it makes things so much easier for Aguero to just really concentrate and really just be a very, very big force on the offensive end. Now you getting them back, it really could change the dynamic for Man City, but I just think... Chelsea would just have to have the biggest drop-off in the world for something to really happen. I think they've been the clear-cut title favorites the entire year. I really don't think that the, anyone will dethrone them. But you never know with Manchester City because just because of how much pure talent is on that roster. I mean, there is not a lot of clubs in the world that can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe talent-wise with what Manchester City has. But Chelsea is the better coach team. They're an outstanding unit. They have so much talent themselves, and they don't really give you any disappointments. I mm -hmm. mean, they had won this year, uh, but for the most part, they're a club that never disappoints, never has a really bad loss that they shouldn't. I think that they will still run away with it. But very happy to come on the air and talk about the African Cup of Nations. Be in sports does such a good job. I mean, they really did a good job with the with presenting the tournament. It was outstanding. This game yesterday was just incredible. I mean, every second. And look, I had to compete. I mean, I had to watch Cavs, Lakers, and I had to watch Clippers, Thunder. Thankfully, those two games were blowouts, so it didn't really affect. I mean, this was definitely the more uh, interesting thing to watch here. Clippers just getting shelled by the Thunder and the Lakers, like we all probably expected, getting dismantled by the Cavaliers. So it was a perfect opportunity for this. And then later, got to watch Barcelona and uh, play a game. BN Sports had the replay. And, of course, you get to, got to see some messy magic. It's not a weekend unless you get to watch some messy magic. And he was just incredible with some of his – I mean, whenever you want to I – mean, when I watch Messi and LeBron James, I kind of see them as the same. They really are because not only can they just take over a game with their pure scoring ability, but they just elevate everybody around them. They could win a game just by their passing. I mean, you just watch Messi. I don't know if there's another player who's more fun to watch just passing the ball. It's just incredible to watch. You can never get enough of it. I could sit here in this room all day just watching Messi highlights. That's just it's an incredible thing to watch. Barcelona, and it's getting interesting. It really is because we saw this weekend Real Madrid losing to Atletico 4 nothing. And let's be honest, folks, Atletico has owned Real Madrid this year. They really have Ronaldo back in the lineup. Atletico just controlled the midfield of that game. They had controlled every aspect. They dominated the midfield of Real Madrid, really just handed them Ever in Copa del Rey in regular season play, they've handed it to Real Madrid, and in a, in a couple weeks we're gonna have a rematch of El Clasico. And right now Barcelona is really playing well. There's no one in La Liga playing better right now. Now Real Madrid did it was missing Sergio Ramos, which is about as big a loss to their defensive side as you could get. An outstanding player. But it's getting very interesting because if, if Barcelona keeps playing the way they are and Real Madrid keeps on being a little shaky when we get to El Clasico, could be very, very interesting. I really like the way Barcelona is playing, though. There seemed like a couple weeks ago there was a lot of controversy there with Luis Enrique and Messi wasn't happy and he liked the Chelsea page on Instagram and he was wanted to make a move to the Premier League. It seems like that's kind of really died down now. It seems like things are stable now there. Everyone's winning, and when you're winning, everybody's happy. Everyone is definitely happy there. 
But that will do it for this segment when we come back, get into some more action. But an incredible weekend for soccer. Very big congratulations to Ivory Coast and Yaya Torre. I have a feeling there's an Ivory Coast Yaya Torre jersey that will be coming in my collection in the coming days. But that is going to do it, and stay with us. <laughs> 